Okay, we got a couple of notes from the game. Field goal percentage for UConn, 58.3%. That's the best they've ever done in a Big East tournament game. For Xavier, this is their first loss in the quarterfinals in Big East tournament. They were 7-0 and going in, and they're 7-1 and now. It's going to be Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer for UConn with Coach Hurley. And again, we have the AP, ASAP service, so we do have a microphone around. People in the first row or two should be able to, if you speak your, if you say your questions clearly. We should be okay there. Otherwise, wait for a microphone to get back to you. He was here yesterday. I don't know if he's here tonight, maybe. I don't know. Do you want me to call him for you? Should I call him for you?
I've gotten hurt before. UConn is on its way and its locker room is open now. And also for Xavier, their locker room is open now. Yeah, Cam Spencer and Tristan Newton. UConn is here. Can we have quiet, please? Cam Spencer, Tristan Newton, and Coach Dan Hurley. Whenever you're ready. What's that? Whenever you're ready. Yeah, uh, obviously thrilled to advance here. Uh, you know, felt like uh, you know that Xavier would have the advantage just having played in the Wednesday game. I think those you know the first couple of media timeouts maybe. They had a higher level of comfortability, having been a, you know, in a playoff game yesterday here. So, uh, but obviously our, our defense the last 30 minutes, and, and uh, you know the 29 assists, uh, you know, was, you know, thrilled with the way we responded to some early adversity. Questions, please raise your hand, and we'll call on you right here in your front. I mean, that, that's their off stops is their time to play. Um, so, you know, it's an opportunity for them to be aggressive and, you know, just kind of look to, you know, look to play in the ball screen game or just go make plays, uh, you know, for each other and get lost in offense. And then obviously off of, uh, you know, off of stops or in dead ball situations, now we're in, you know, the situation where we got to execute, you know, actions that we like to run. So, uh, you know, when we're getting the stops like that and we're getting transition opportunities, you know, with the way we execute uh, offense in the half court, uh, you know we're, we're tough to guard when we get rolling. Right here in front. All three of you. Um, when you when you came out and they started with a 10-0 run into that first TV timeout, 10-4. Did you reflect back on your last home game? I mean, your last away game against Providence, where they were up 15-2 on you. Um, no, not really. You know, that was a that was a whole different game, whole different team. You know. Um, like Coach said, we, we kind of he, – he warned us before the game that they were going to come out like that and just, you know, stay with it. We had to start guarding and, you know, execute our offense. And um, 
We didn't really think about last game. We just, you know, executed and played defense, rebound, got on transition, and it, and came back from that. Down here on the left, Joe. I mean, we, we, we got, uh, you know, he's, he's a gentle giant, you know. He's a, uh, you know, jolly green giant. So sometimes he's got to, you know, get the, you know, get that intensity level up, get that, that nastiness. He's such a sweetheart of a guy. And, uh, you know, he just, he, he turned it up and got pissed off. And, uh, but just what the combination of those two guys gave us tonight, it looked a lot like what we were getting from our centers last year. Uh, Samson was fabulous, and uh, and then when Donovan turned it up, uh, he impacts the game like few players in the country. Second row, Dave. Yeah, Dan, that's about Samson. It looked like he was particularly energetic tonight. Uh, first half, he really came up with a lot of energy. Is that, did you notice that just as well? Yeah, he's been playing. Um, I think he went through a stretch of games, uh, you know, in the, the – you know, where he wasn't being as effective as he was when Donovan was out in that early part of the season. I just think he's gotten back to the things that he does well. Uh, he's learned to handle the physicality of these games. And, uh, I mean, he was a ma major difference maker. What he was doing ball screen defense-wise, too, just kind of backing those guards up and, uh, um, you know, keeping them from getting downhill. And then the pressure he puts on the rim when he's rolling is it's, uh, it's opens a lot of things up. Third row in the middle. Coach, looking at some of these numbers, they're phenomenal. You were up one at the half. You guys outscored them 54 to 24 overall in the paint. You had 29 assists. When you were only up one at halftime, what did you say in the locker room to get the guys to come out on fire like they did in the second half? Yeah, I mean, a little bit of it was like raise your intensity level. This is a playoff game. You know, you, you're when you're trying to end uh, the other teams, either like their Big East career or the Big East season, or you're trying to end a team's season period, you, you know, you've got to be absolutely on point. The execution's got to be on point. Uh, you know, the effort and the intensity and the attention to detail. I mean, it, it's all got to be there. And, and um, you know, just I think it took us a half to get going, but also credit Xavier. I mean, they, they played, I thought, a really, really, really good first half. Back on the left, thanks. Hey there, Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. This one's for you, Coach. Um, I understand that Billy Donovan is something of a mentor to you, and now as you're getting on the eve of the NCAA tournament, you know, were there any lessons that he imparted about you know, going back to back like he did with Florida and you know, any takeaways that you've tried to implement this season? Yeah, he t I, I talked to him a couple times uh, you know, in the off season lead up to the preseason. He was, uh, you know, coaches like uh, you know, Coach Calhoun and uh, Tom Izzo and um, – Coach Donovan, like my, my college coaching, the idols, the coaches I idolized. So, um, you know, he, he said really, like, don't make it about that. You know, like, don't don't chase uh, a, a repeat, like, like um, improving the offseason as a coach, serve your players well, stick to the formula. Like, don't pursue the achievement. You know, just, you know, do a great job. <laughs> you know, improve as a coach and – and um, you know, serve your players well, and and let the chips fall where they may. But don't obsess over that accomplishment, or else uh, you know it's going to make you crazy. Back on the left, coach. Your team had 29 assists on 35 made shots tonight. What can you tell me about your team's chemistry going in as you prepare for the NCAA tournament? I, mean, I can tell you they should have had 34, because that one <laughs> that one stretch of three or four minutes when we were, you know, our lobs were a little bit off. And uh, we bricked some threes and stuff. And, you know, we had some sleepy shit going on out there that I didn't like. But uh, it's a testament to the group. I mean, there's not, there's not so many teams in the country with this level of talent and NBA players. I mean, a, a starting five of all guys that are NBA players that are willing uh, for it to be other people's nights on a given night. Uh, you know, for Tristan, who's an All-American and, you know, and a you know, AP player of the year in the league. And, and um you know, for him to, you know, go get 13, 7, and 5 and, uh, and only take 10 shots and, 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 and allow others just speaks to, and Cam's done it, and just got a team filled of, uh, you know, guys that bought into the culture and all about winning. In the middle, Pat. Just go. There we go. Uh, for Tristan and then Dan, if you wouldn't mind commenting as well, talking about your passing game, how much of it is kind of organic and how much is – coached in, just you guys' ability to find 
open players all the time? Well, I mean, Coach, they, they drop good, you know, schemes and plays, and um, we go through them every day to see what read we need. You know, obviously you have to read the floor, but, you know, our coaches do a good job of putting us in positions to make great passes and, and have multiple options. So, you know, we got great shooters, great lob threats, so it's pretty easy to, you know, give our shooters the ball. Cam, like 45% shooter, you know, AK, uh, Donovan rolled to Rim Sam. It's pretty much easy. So, uh, credit to the coaches for their schemes and helping me out with that. All right, we're going to do two more right here, Don. Cam, as Coach alluded, most Xavier, most of the teams you're going to be playing were on the bubble fighting for their lives. Not necessarily the case for you, for you guys. So, how do you kind of get that feel that you want this badly enough that you're going to play like you're playing for your lives? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're playing for a championship. You know, this is one of the biggest goals that we set for ourselves at the beginning of the year. So, I mean, if you don't want to win now, then you probably shouldn't be playing. So, you know, Coach said it's, it's very tough to end anyone's season, but then to add in the fact that they're fighting for an NCAA tournament spot makes it even even greater. So, um, we got to come ready to play tomorrow again. Last one, Jaden. I think uh, when you when we watched them on Synergy, you you, know, you saw a two-way player. You saw you know a guy that could really pass the ball, and and um, I just think the offensive system fits uh, you know fits him perfectly. You know he, he's good in the ball screen game. He's good off-ball movement. He can go get his own shot. Uh, you know the, these two guys right here. This is you know best best backcourt uh, in the best backcourt in the country right here. So. Uh, you know, the, these guys make it easy for their teammates. Um, but, yeah, we did not teach Cam how to pass. Um, did we? They well, did. We, they we, did a lot. We, uh, thank you, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You come. Yes, thank you. <laughs> here yesterday. I don't know. It'll 6.30 and then we have to, because the second double header starts at yeah. 7. We'll, so be, we'll yeah. be done and we'll out of here by then. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Where is he? Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you for that permission.
can do it. Thanks for saying hello. Quincy Oliveri and Desmond Claude, Desmond. and Coach Sean Miller. You want to go? To you know, I, I make a statement. Um, you know, I'm really very, very proud of our team. Uh, we've overcome a lot from uh, the month of July or August this past summer until now. Uh, I don't think I've ever coached a team that's gone through more adversity when it comes to season-ending injuries and different different players not being available uh, than we've had. These two guys, uh, Des and Q, and uh, put Davion McKnight in their, in their group. Uh, I, I said it yesterday, and I really I'll stand by it. I don't think three players have meant more to their respective team and program anywhere in the country than these three guys have, have meant to, to us. And we wrote them from the very beginning all the way through today. Um, and I think my comment about the game itself is, you know, we did the best we could in the first half, you know, to be down one at, at the half. You know, I thought we played with a lot of energy on defense. I got back in transition and uh, had three turnovers, did a lot of great things. But we weren't able to sustain it. We, we, uh, we simply ran, ran out of gas. Our lack of depth, lack of size, uh, and just the fact that, you know, we played last night against that team, uh, we just we, we weren't able to sustain all the, the very good things that we did in the first half in the second half. And in addition to that, any team that's going to beat UConn for the remainder of the year, they're going to have to be really, really good, and they're going to have to play a great game. Uh, I think Danny and his staff have put together an incredible team. Uh, I personally think they're better this year than last year. That doesn't mean they'll win the national championship, but their offensive efficiency and their scoring punch and their balance is just at another level this year than it was last year. Uh, and maybe they hit that in the NCAA tournament a year ago, but throughout the Big East season, you know, they're, they're, they're really dominant on both ends. It's hard to score on them when they're on defense, and it's really difficult to defend them when they have the ball. So we lost to a terrific team. Questions will go Shelby first. Uh, 
I mean, it's just been a long five years. Um, it's just been a long five years. Every year I learn something new, and then to be able to put everything that I learned at Rice and be able to showcase that on the biggest stage in my final year, it was, it was a lot. You know, I came here and I had a, a, a goal that I wanted to achieve, and uh, I've been, you know, beating myself up a lot lately since Sunday because once I once once the news came out that I didn't make all conference team, I kind of looked at myself as a failure, the season as a failure personally, and just the way I worked and the way I competed and the respect I earned it it kind of just felt like a stab in the in the back. Um, for the whole Sunday and, you know, just talking with Coach Miller that, that, that Sunday and then everybody just congratulated me and I, I, I just kept telling them to stop congratulating me because I didn't do anything. I hadn't earned anything. And I just had a mission to come out here and prove everyone wrong, whoever voted for the awards, to just prove them. Like, I led the league in scoring. I can score with the best of them. My team is a very well-coached and very well-connected team. And... Just because we're a nine seed doesn't mean anything, you know, and we were competing in that first half. And I, I told everybody last night, like, to unpack your bags because we stand. And, you know, just to just to maintain confidence. And as I, as I walked out on that floor, I, I told myself that you back at Texas. You know, if, if you remember when we played uh, Texas last year in Austin at, at Rice, and I said, this is your second chance on the biggest stage to, to make some noise and just to fall short. And all the emotions just to come out of what what, what could have been, what what happened, finally being able to release the 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 hurt that I had been holding in since Sunday, it was tough. And then to go through the line and have the respect for words that the coaching staff from UConn said, it was a lot. It was definitely a lot. Adam. Um, you know, just, just working out hard, you know, looking at the system and, you know, looking at opportunities and, uh, trying to, you know, just, just trying to be better, you know, f you know, follow Kobe and watch how he played last year, the opportunities that he got, you know, same with Conco and, um, just being able to recognize that in the game and notice how other teams were, you know, guarding me. So, um, it, it was like a, a, a positive and adjustment and you know after that it was just a confidence thing you know I had uh, during the summer I had like my daily affirmations you know in the mornings where I would you know tell myself certain things to start off the morning and you know just attack the day and you know eventually like you know when you work hard every day you keep putting in the work you don't take shortcuts you keep going you keep going even when you're tired and it's eventually going to pay off and I think um, that that's what happened uh, this season. Like down here on the right. Hey, Sean, can you talk about what Quincy meant to you both on and off the court? Yeah, you know, um, Quincy had arguably what I think is one of the great seasons in Xavier history, really. If, if you just stack up the numbers, they don't lie. And I think the one difference between Quincy and a lot of others that you compare him to is the schedule he played against both this year's Big East, 20 games, 10 at home, 10 on the road. We played a number one seed, I think, six times. And look, the one thing I've learned, that's not a good thing. There's, there's no trophy given. There's nothing you can brag about to say you've played a one seed six or seven times, whatever we have. But these guys, that's the schedule they performed against. And uh, I think, so that's number one. I think the second thing is, you know, Quincy has a charisma about him, a leadership and a smile about him that's very contagious. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you have a personality like his, it works both ways. You catch him on a good day, he's this. You catch him on a bad day, uh-oh, he's that. That's not him. He's the same every day, and that's to his credit. And when you recruit people like him to your program, you know, there's a lot that you know. There's a lot that you hope is right. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think any of us, any of us, uh, look at Quincy coming to Xavier, performing at Xavier, who he was both on the court, in the games, in practice, every single day leading up to this tournament. 
as anything other than A plus and exceptional. And uh, you know, we had a transfer a year ago. Quincy knows. Obviously, Des was his teammate. Sule Boom. Sule had a very good year as well. But uh, those two guys, when I look at you know them coming here, they've really impacted our program in a very significant manner. And you know, in terms of Des as well. You have to understand the difference between being a good freshman on a very veteran-laden team and being forced to be one of the top guys uh, right away. That, that, that's a huge discrepancy. It's very different. And I think the way that Des has improved as the year has gone on, just the performance that he has had, the seasons he has had, that also speaks not only to him but his bright, bright future as well. Uh, and I wish Davion was up here as, as, as well because statistically and in, in being our heart and soul, I can make the case that him sandwiched between Quincy and, and, and Dez, those three guys, man, they, they had great individual seasons. They showed up every single day in practice. You talk about building a culture, building a program. You know, you want people and players like, like all three of them. Uh, and that's a long-winded answer to your question about Quincy, but – the belief that I have in these three, the meaning they've had to this year's team, I wish I could have helped them a little bit more because look in the Big East right now, the difference between finishing in ninth place this season and fourth is six to eight plays. It really is. It's six to eight plays. And uh, we have, have nothing but uh, I think a lot of pride in how hard we went about it. We aren't perfect, but I think to some degree uh, we fought all the way to the end. Right in the middle there. Coach, you, you uh, talked about all of this throughout this press conference, but just to reiterate, uh, you had all the injuries. Yeah, I, I believe you played the toughest schedule in the country, I believe. Have you ever, as a player or a coach, experienced a season like this? And my other question would be is how do you move forward? Yeah, no doubt. We, we overcame a lot. I, I think at the end of the day, you know, we've had, first of all, a lot of change from last year. So when you think about our team last year, we knew that a lot of those guys would be moving on. And then Kobe Jones joined them because he made a great decision. He became an NBA player. But when Zach Fremantle and Jerome Hunter went down in the summer, that was after our recruiting window had closed. So we – we really didn't have much to, to turn to. We ended up, you know, being able to get, you know, Sasha Siani and Lazar Djokovic, Kitas Demiska in the summer. And thank goodness we did. Well, that, that helped us practice. And then each of those guys, you know, contributed depth to our team. But um, so these guys lived it. And I think the role that they would have had if we would have had maybe better health having those guys, um, I think they would have had a little bit more room for error. I think no doubt about it. I think we could have been a tournament team, and those six to eight plays that I described uh, clearly could have gone to our favor. Uh, you know, down the home stretch too, Dalen Swain, who was on the All Freshman team, you know, Dalen's at home right now, recovering from getting his appendix removed. You know, losing him at the time we did didn't help matters either. Uh, we were already shorthanded, and I think the rest that we were trying to give these guys towards the end of the year. It made it even more difficult. That's why last night's win was so satisfying that we were able to do it, you know, to me in, in so many ways shorthanded. But you learn a lot in sports when adversity strikes and obstacles. I think these guys, lessons that they've learned this year, they'll have forever. And in so many ways, I think what we've gone through will strengthen our future. Um, and, and look, I don't know if the NIT will come calling. If it does, um, I, I do think we have more basketball left in us. And we'll embrace that if it does. If it doesn't, uh, we'll reconvene. And I think these guys especially should have their head held very, very high on what they've done for our program and, and really to their own respective individual years. Xavier, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.
guys should shoot it like over the net. Yeah. Um, what about an angle here, Rob? Can we get Serby here? Brandon standing next to him with Serby up on the podium. Step there? Where like Brandon over here and Steve on this side? I don't know what side is Brandon's side. I think that's too much of a height difference. Really? It might make them almost the same height. It's not even. Yeah, we can't have Serbi pose. I mean, we won't know until we actually have them in place how that angle is going to work. Of course, I just stand up on this step. I think so, right? I think that's what it is. And you guys have mic legs or no? I didn't bring it. I figured it had SMY. I mean, that's the same height that I probably did. I mean, we could go none if you want. None instead of SMY if you want to make it. Uh, SMY is fine. Okay. I have two SMY legs. Yeah. I got one if you need more. Is that what you're doing? You're doing okay. business school? Yeah, I got 10 right, here. Cool. Right. Okay. Okay. What would you do for business school? Like accounting or finance or something? Uh, I was doing sports management with it, but I don't know. That makes sense. One day I'll know what I want to do. I want to make money. <laughs> you're selling TV really, really good to me here. <laughs> um, TV school is just Conscious enthusiasm all the time. Oh, we've got some. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who wants to be a man of the hour? Oh, you again. Seeing you again. What's up, bro? How you doing? Carson, you know Carson? Yeah. Well, we go way back. <laughs> St. Hall leads. Already? So, we're, we're so we thought we're either going to put you both behind or we're seeing if they play fast. Near, you guys are the same height as Steve took a step up, but this is going to be too no, no, much. I, well, I like being short. Hey, that's you're not, you're right. Right. I didn't know how drastic it was. I didn't want to be inconsistent. They're white jerseys are cool. I went to Stanton, so they're Oh, did you? I think regular. Yeah. Yeah. Are you from the Midwest? Yeah. Where are you from? Minnesota? Cleveland. Juicy Lucy? Juicy, I just uh, Juicy Lucy. Oh, awesome. It burnt my mouth the first time. I thought, so man, good. match was great. So like, where are we headed? So oh, it was awesome. I go to Wisconsin. Awesome. Oh, yeah? Okay, yep, yep, yep. Robbie, did you do the Juicy Lucy? I've never been there, but I've heard of it. I did, yeah. yeah. I went to the match. That's right. It's just going to Green Bay. Okay. So we're going to put you in behind there. It's like a little side of the It's so weird. Fun fact, it was like the last county in the United States to like have a case. So we went and like, I had no one.
She didn't like grow up wanting to go there, but I love it. I never considered transferring. Any questions from the media? So I used to go to all their days, every okay. single one of them. I think they do pick up too. Funny enough, the last UConn game I was at, I'm going to like UConn. Time wrap or anything? You guys good to go? Uh, how long are we thinking, Indy Kate? Mm. Let's keep it. What you have three? Anything under 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 four? Let's keep it under three, four, three or five. Hours. Yeah, if you get. Well, I'm gonna three minute mark. I'll do this in three minutes. Just uh, so you know, we're put up yeah. a three. Because yeah, we just got three questions. I just have three questions. Oh, every minute I'll do one, two, okay. three, and let you know where we're at. And okay. if it goes three thirty, I'll wrap. That a real yeah. producer director. No, we just pretend we don't know. I like that. It's very consistent. I'm surprised I, I remembered it, actually. <laughs> You're about 65% at this point. Right? That's not bad. That's, for me, that's yeah. good. <laughs> Xavier, I wasn't worried. UConn fans weren't worried. They saw this team rampage to a national title last year, and they expect nothing less this year. And um, I'm not going to give you my NCAA Final Four yet, okay. but they'll be in it. Yeah, you're talking about that 10-0 run that Xavier started the game with. UConn answered with their own 10-0 run. Uh, I saw you talking with UConn head coach Dan Hurley. Uh, behind the scenes a little bit. Can you kind of give us an a, a inside look on what that conversation was about? It was about um, repeating and talking to his team, not about repeating, because that's not the way you repeat. Yeah. As he mentioned in his press conference, Seriously. you take one game at a time. I hate to see old cliche, but 
It's the process and show up with intensity and unselfishness the way you saw them play today and m survive in advance. And it starts, it starts with the Big East Tournament where they were eliminated the last three years. Dan, Dan Hurley has not advanced past the semifinals. And I was talking in the Connecticut locker room to Mr. Uh, Caravan, who tells me that they were sick to their stomachs last year when Marquette beat them in the Big East semifinal. So they're on a mission. Did you see anything today, any flaw that the UConn Huskers kind of put on tape that can get them beat going forward for the rest of the tournament? Well, yeah, if they have to play noon games and they show up sleepwalking. <laughs> but no, I, they're, uh, they've got five NBA starters. They bring in guys off the bench who could start for maybe even Wagner. Who knows? But uh, no, this is – they've got a great – Coach, a great head coach who knows how to function at this time of the year, who embraces the pressure. When you coach at UConn, Hurley has been saying this for years, you embrace the pressure. You've got a bullseye on your back. You embrace it. You welcome it. And you just do your thing. And look, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict UConn's going to cut down the nets. You got me to okay, – you got, got me you. going. Yeah. Right there, Steve Shervey says it, but they got to beat uh, the winner of Seton Hall, St. John's, and that goes down Friday back here at the Garden. They will close. They out. will win the Big East tournament, and they will win the national title. And if they don't, I hope you burn this tape. <laughs> we just quit it out on that one because that's what Shervey says. There we go. Thanks uh, for joining us. Thank you, Brent. Two small points. 